Body cam footage reveals a parent's worst nightmare. You're the child's dad? Yeah, she hasn't seen me in a very long time. <laughs> so she kind of freaked out and said, where's my mom? You're not my dad. What's mom's name? Might be Isis. Might be Katrina. You're trying to get a kid to come with you somewhere wait, that you don't know is the not where his parents are. That's wait, wait. You don't know the mom's name? It might be... What? To get a kid to come with you somewhere. What's mom's name? Might be Isis. Might be Katrina. You're you don't know the mom's name? You're trying to get a kid to come with you somewhere that is not where his parents are. That's not acceptable here or anywhere. But he said, hi. And I said, do I know you? Yeah, the kid was probably just very confused. Are you attracted to kids? Well, they're beautiful creatures. But... Yeah, I'm attracted to kids. Oh, we... oh! Oh! Entertained. How can we figure out what's going on? Okay, sure. perfect. That's a good idea. Thank you. On Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, a parent's worst nightmare shockingly comes to life when a strange man tries to lure a 10-year-old child onto a oh. nearby boat. Terrified, the young girl attempts to flee from the man and approaches a few employees working at Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, parasailing. The child quickly hides behind the workers and shakily tells them of the horrifying ordeal to which the owner, Benjamin Rodriguez, discreetly dials 911. However, the disturbing nightmare is far from over as police soon come face to face with their deranged suspect, who will go on to make one of the most shocking confessions ever caught on tape. When authorities arrive on the scene, Benjamin frantically makes his way to an officer, wasting no time in divulging the twisted tale. This girl that's over there, the girl's crying, coming up to us, saying this guy's trying to take her. This guy yeah, it's smart kid, the girl smart kid though, the guy behind him. Where's She's over another beach with another officer. With my apartment, yeah, no, yeah. I don't know, another yeah. officer. And so I'm getting the picture of this guy's trying to take her. So I'm like, right. well, let's go try to find a parent. Right. All right, so I'm walking, trying to play along, but I know it's like not adding up. So we head over to the grass, because he's, he's like, I, I'm good, I'm good, I can go, I can go. So he goes to some random girl over there. Okay? That's the kid's mom. Hey, miss, are you missing a kid? No, I don't know the kid, I don't know this guy. And the guy's like, well, I don't know what to tell you, but I gotta go. And I'm like, no, buddy, I'm with you here. You know, I'm not leaving here. I'm trying to take this girl, and the girl came to us, trying to get away from this. What's the mom look like? Oh, I forget. Wait, where okay. is the mom now? How do you know the mom? I'm, I'm her husband. Well, we haven't been married in three years. We're not quite married. We're not actually going to get married, but we might. And it's like, this. Freaking sense, man. Officers quickly learn that the man in question is 42-year-old John Marshall Randolph. As they approach their suspect, it's blatantly clear that absolutely nothing is adding up. However, their questions will be answered soon enough. How did you come across the child? You said she was down, down there by the parasail, right? I don't think so. I don't... Okay, take your hands out of your pockets for me. Thank you. I don't know. I had I had a friend shot in the face because somebody had their hands in their pockets. So, you know, I'm we sorry, can continue this. Or you can pay attention to what I'm, I'm asking you and telling you, okay? Thank oh, you. this guy's weird, now, man. You came across child down by the parasailing thing, right? <clears throat> so what happened next? I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay, have you been drinking today? No. You took her or you brought her to somebody? I didn't bring her. She was running down by herself. <clears throat> right down by herself, okay? Running away yeah, from you, um, mate. We came up here and she was down on the docks, though, I thought. Like, I thought she was still in the docks, but I don't know. He says that she's not. Where did, where did you see her? I'm going to be able to mail it to us. Parking lot by the beach. Came up to us. So, you took the child to the parasailing people? No. The child ran down there. Okay. <clears throat> so, how did you get involved in this? I just saw the child run down there. Okay. Do you try and stop the child or anything? Mm -mm. The child just ran down there. She said I was... Well, I remember saying I'm her dad, because that's true. Um, You're the child's dad? Yeah, she hasn't seen me in a very long time. <laughs> okay. So I apologize, um, but we're supposed to do a visitation um, with her mom and see the, the kid, you know? And um, so it was like the first time seeing her in a long time. And so she kind of freaked out and said, where's my mom? You're not my dad. Yo, what kind of fucking lie? Dude, like, bro, you have to be a bit, you, well, not a bit. You got to be messed up in the head to try and lie like that, bro. To try and lie to that, bro. I'm sorry. It probably wasn't the best way to, like, have a first visitation. But she found her mom. 
and on the grass over there, and he saw that. Yeah, the kid was probably just very confused. Despite John's explanation for his disturbing actions, he will soon twist his words into another attempt at clearing his name. However, police are about to learn that John is not who he claims to be. In fact, he's hiding a most disgusting secret, and he won't be able to conceal it for much longer. Just out of curiosity, why would you just show up and be like, hey, I'm your dad? You know, and I'd run the... Like, I met her by the Okay. So you met her over there. Uh huh. And the kid was there. Why is he smirking and like can that? Take your hands out of your pocket for me, please. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. That. That's right. Um, and then when you met her and the child, who's no, the mom? You could, bro, you could just tell he's a fucking weirdo. You could just tell he's a complete weirdo, bro. Oh, actually. What's mom's name? Might be Isis. Might be Katrina. Might be! Might be Mary. Okay. I don't remember. Is the little girl with you over there when when you contacted them on the bench? Bro, what the fuck is wrong with him? Yes. Okay. And then... Yes. Okay. And then, so did she take off running at that point? Um, yeah. Okay. And then she ran, that's when she ran down the, the dock there. Yeah. Okay. John, right now, uh, I'm going to detain you. Okay. All right. You're not on arrest at this point, but you are being detained. Okay. So we we'll figure out what's going on. Okay, perfect. That's a good idea. Thank you. Yo, fucking John is oddly mate. chipper for being detained, and his strange demeanor makes for an all the more disturbing investigation. However, this would only be amplified when police have a chance to speak with the victim, who turns out to actually be a 10-year-old boy, despite what John claims. It's heartbreak Wait, turns what? out. However, this would only be amplified when police have a chance to speak with the victim, who turns out to actually be a 10-year-old boy, oh, despite what John claims. It's heartbreaking to hear the child relive the traumatic experience basically um he was over there and i was jumping off the dock and getting back on and he was talking to my brother and i don't know what they were saying but he said hi and i said do i know you and he said something about me growing super fast like he saw me when fast? i was a baby and he said he grew super slow and then he high-fived me and we, we were walking down and he wanted he said he owned all those boats and then he wanted me to go on boating with him and then he wanted to do the parasail with me and then i went to these people and he also said that he was my mom's husband and i was he was i was his son and then he said something about like me together for a million years did the guy say what the did? fuck what did he, say? Um, he just kept on calling me the two brothers were swimming near the docks at Independence Point in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, when John creepily began to talk to the children. But the brave 10-year-old immediately knew what to do and quickly asked for help from Benjamin and his employees. Here, Benjamin gives a detailed recollection of those shocking moments captured by the security camera. The kid and that dude. Yep. This kid's trying to get help. This dude's trying to convince him to right. not get help, right? So we're getting, we're winding up for the day. Yep. Getting things done. And uh, this is his last chance trying to convince this kid to not get you know. home. Here comes the kid, comes over here. And they're like, hey, do you have any questions? Thinking they're, you know, parasol customers or right. something. That's and this kid's legend. now crying. And he comes over to me and he's like, hiding behind him. He said, that's not my dad. And yes, I'm his dad. He just Yo, got up from a nap. Creep. He's groggy. He's he thinks like this when he wakes up from a nap, and we're just like, "What the crap?" He's like, "Well, you guys can you guys can leave or you guys can stay here. I'm gonna go <laughs> get them." And I'm like, "Riley, you stay here with this kid." I'm going to go follow this guy. While Benjamin refused to let John out of his sight until Good police man. arrived, his employee, Riley Estes, helped the child find his mother. Stop. Yeah, where is the mom? I hope that guy was like, I hope they get a lot of dirt on him. <laughs> <laughs> get that creeper out of here, man. 
As the sickening investigation continues, we'll learn that John does in fact have a bit of dirt on him, so to speak. However, in no way does it compare to his upcoming confession that will stop authorities dead in their tracks. Back at the police vehicle, John tells an officer that he works close by, but authorities could have never guessed the suspect's profession. Where's your officer in that building? The diamond building over there, the 250. Okay. What, what, what office? What is it? I'm a lawyer. Lawyer? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been there? At that You're office? a lawyer. Over here. Over here. I moved in in June. 2021? Yeah. It's like a month ago. That's Shockingly, John is telling the truth. He informs the officer that he opened his practice, the law office of John Randolph, in Spokane, Washington back in 2015, although he recently moved to Idaho only one year prior to his current encounter with police. According to several reviews, John is held in high regard as an attorney, even winning a Client's Choice Award in 2020. However, what? there's a side of the lawyer that hasn't made its way into the light just yet, but this will take a drastic turn in just a matter of minutes. What brought you over here? Um, I went through a divorce with the wife. How long were you married? This time, we've been married before. What? How long were you married before? Yo, do you not learn the first time? I feel like, bro, if I got married and then divorced, I'm never doing that again with the same person. Not with the same person, bro. Another officer is a bit suspicious of John and questions him further about his law practice. I've been over in this office here for about a month. Yeah. Where, I can show you my office. It's got a swimming pool and like a um, salt water swimming pool, a jacuzzi, passports, a parking garage. Um, I've got a big leather couch and art all over the office and stuff like that. What do you do for work? I practice law. Law? Yeah. All right, on. Yeah. What do you, like, civil? According to Mate, you're fucking weird. his website, John practices personal injury, general litigation, and family law. Ironically, it now looks like he may be the one who needs an attorney, and for a most sickening reason. So the boy you were following, you own- Hey Bumble, appreciate the prime dude, legend. These boats right here, you own any boat? Yeah, I'll... You own all of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you ask that boy to go on the boats with you? He owns all the boats. For a boat ride? Maybe, yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, why would you ask him to go on a boat with you? He's my stepson. I thought you were saying that it was a girl, though. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Got a weird memory about this. Did you, did you want to go parasailing with them, too? Yeah, that would have been fun. Well, did you say that? Oh, this guy is okay. weird. Okay. Why would you? Why would you ask him to go parasailing with you? Because it's fun. It's like it's this big parachute. You go up into the air and you look down the lake. It's amazing. And there's crystal waters that look like diamonds. And... But that's not your son. Oh, is it? Okay. I'm sorry. Or daughter. Okay. <laughs> what? That's not, you don't tell me sorry. It, that's your fault. You're trying to get a kid to come with you. Yo, you don't Somewhere mistake your kid, where bro. His parents are. That's not acceptable here or anywhere. You were guys like talking and calling him Charles, Charlie. Do you even have a stepson? Have you ever been diagnosed with any mental illness? Yes. What were you diagnosed with? Bipolar. Bipolar. You take any medications for that? Not currently. Not currently. Are you supposed to be taking any medications? No, my doctor. Apparently, John is hey, allegedly to be back hiding on. a rather tumultuous past. You a need woman to be back who would on. like to remain anonymous asserts that the suspect is a ticking time bomb. You don't know when he's going to relapse. Just wait until he unveils his most sick and twisted confession. Do you come down here often? Yeah. Do you talk to kids often? No. Why today? It's my birthday. No. It's your birthday? Yeah. Are you attracted to kids? No. Really? Well, they're beautiful creatures. Huh? Yeah. I'm... What? I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm a truck. Yes. You are? Uh. Do you watch child? No. You're just attracted to kids? What makes you attracted to them? They're beautiful creatures of God. 
Following his disturbing admission, John was arrested and charged with one count of child enticement. However, according to Idaho law, because the charge is a misdemeanor offense, a suspect can only be placed under arrest if at least one of two conditions are met. Either an officer must witness the alleged crime or what? the suspect has a warrant. On account what? of these conditions, an officer contacted the mother of the child, along with Benjamin Rodriguez, and the two then placed John under citizen's arrest. The 42-year-old was then booked into the Kootenai County Jail. According to police documents, John would go on to make another bogus claim, this time saying that he believed the child to be his son from the future. Oh That's my god, he he's off his head. Sailing. Yet it would only be another failed attempt. Okay, he definitely needs, he, he needs a mental institution. Like now, bro. He's off his head. He's off his head. At explaining his monstrous actions. An update provided by a local news source approximately one week after the incident reported that John pleaded guilty to disturbing the peace. As a result, he served one day in jail and was ordered to pay a $1,000 fine. Is that Although it? Although it appears that John is still working as an attorney currently. Is that... Yeah. One, one day at one grand? No mental help? No sent... Bro, you literally have proof of him trying to lure kids. What, you're just going to wait till it actually fucking happens and then get his ass? Like, bro, what?